In peace, nothing so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. But when the blast of war rings in our ears, then imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard-favored rage, and lend the eye a terrible aspect. Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Now that's one of my favorite lines in all of Shakespeare's plays. It's from Henry V. It's probably my favorite one of his plays. It's got all my favorite one-liners and speeches that Shakespeare ever wrote in that play, rather. If you haven't read it, highly recommend it. You're missing out. And I bring it up today because I was recently watching a video from uh, the Warrior Poet Society, John Lovell. By the way, check him out. The guy is awesome. And he was talking about a line from C.S. Lewis's Chronicles of Narnia that he said just hit him to his core when he was reading it to his kids. And that line was, don't you dare not to dare today. And it kind of struck me probably the same way it struck him, because that's the way the line from Shakespeare that I just quoted to you, it's the way it always hits me. And it's what I say at the beginning of every one of my classes when I'm training people who are just getting into guns, just getting into tactical stuff, just getting into the prepared citizen mindset. Especially when they ask me, why do you think you need this? I mean, why do I need to know how to run a plate carrier? Why do I need to know how to effectively run a rifle? Why can't I just rely on my pistol? I mean, I carry a pistol every day. Why do I need to know how to use a rifle? Why do I need to know how to uh, properly orient my gear? Why do I need to know these tactics that the military uses? Well, it's a very simple answer. Because when the day comes, it could be war, could be natural disaster, could be Mad Max, zombies rising from the grave, Russians falling from the sky, full-on grid-down, zombie apocalypse, whatever. There is no telling what tomorrow brings. You never know that the world you live in will continue to be as safe as it is. People in the United States do not realize we are extremely lucky. We stand on the shoulders of giants, and we stand over the graves of heroes and warriors who fought and bled and sacrificed for the last two centuries to build this nation that we now enjoy. The rest of the world envies us. That's why everybody wants to come here. The rest of the world is dangerous. Ask anybody who's been overseas, especially a soldier who's been overseas in a war, in a, excuse me, in a war zone. People overseas don't really worry about high gas prices. They don't really worry about, oh, the store is out of my favorite thing. They're worried about, are they going to get shot today? They're worried about, is a raiding party from across the border going to hop, skip, and jump over to my village and massacre a couple dozen people today? They're worried about, oh, is this side or the other going to drop a bomb on me today by accident or intentionally? And I'm not saying that we should live in that mindset of always being afraid. Far from it. <clears throat> but what the point I'm trying to bring up is, even Shakespeare... 500 years ago, wrote down in his plays, and in a lot of his writings, a lot of his writing has a similar sentiment. He wrote it down even back then, that nothing in peace so becomes a man as modest stillness and humility. Translation, in peacetime, nothing is more becoming of a man than to be soft, gentle, and considerate. That's why they were called gentlemen back in the day. But when the blast of war rings in our ears, that's when your home and your family is threatened, when your way of life is threatened, when something happens that makes you have to unleash that beast, that makes you have to dive deep and grab hold of the most primal part of yourself. Imitate the action of the tiger. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise fair nature with hard-favored rage, and lend the eye a terrible aspect. When it comes time, knuckle down, man up, gear up, lock and load. Because when that day comes, <clears throat> that you have to dig deep and you have to pull out the most primal part of your inner being that all of us carry. I don't care who you are, what you believe, what gender you are. It does not matter. All of us have good and evil inside of us. Most time, most of us let the good shine through. But in extreme circumstances... The evil must be tapped into. Going back to John Lovell, his entire premise for his channel and his videos is that we all must be warrior poets. We must be gentlemen warriors. And I 100% agree with him, disagree on some points, but for the most part, we're of the same mind on this subject. People hear the, hear the word, rather, gentleman, 
And these days, it's often associated with, oh, he's weak, he's soft. And you call somebody a gentleman, most of the people I know would say, don't insult me like that. Well, people forget what the word gentleman originally meant. I mean, back in the old days, right after, say, the medieval period, going into the Renaissance, gentleman was not a term for a soft person. A gentleman was a man who carried around a cloak over his shoulder. Fun historical fact, by the way. So that he, if he was walking down the street and a, happened upon a lady who was about to step into a puddle, the point of that cloak was to pull it off your shoulder, throw it over the puddle, so that she could then step over the puddle. Actually, this time period is where a lot of our modern day customs come by or come th- come from. Rather, if you're walking with your lady or your significant other, and she's walking on the inside of the street or the side of the sidewalk facing towards the street, no, no, no. The proper way to, to walk is for the man to be to the outside of the street. That's because if a wagon or a car were to go by and splash water, it's going to hit you. It's not going to hit her. The same thing goes for some time periods or some areas. Sometimes the man's supposed to walk to the outside of the street because people used to throw their <clears throat> leavens out the upper windows because there was no such thing as indoor plumbing back then. And when that got thrown, it's going to hit you, not going to hit her. Now, on the same token... A gentleman who was always soft-spoken, very mild-mannered, very well-educated, a genteel man, if, it, if you will. That man would also slap you across the face with a glove, walk outside, draw a pistol, sword, or knife, and fight you to the death if you so much as looked at him wrong, insulted his woman, insulted him, or did something that he thought was untoward. A gentleman was the kind of man that would always be willing to throw a compliment, to give a soft-spoken speech, or to offer a lady a well-spoken poem of affection, or to draw his sword and lop off a head at the drop of a hat and drop it himself. To me, that's what the modern man should be. That's what men through all of history have been. There's good men, and there's evil men. Evil men will do evil at every turn. It is what they do. That's why they are evil. Good men must let the good side rule over them. But occasionally, when the occasion calls for it, and in times of extreme need, that evil must be tapped into. Stiffen the sinews, summon up the blood, disguise your fair nature with hard-favored rage, and lend the eye a truly terrible aspect. Hopefully, most of us never have to tap into that. It's a very hard thing to do. It's a very hard thing to live with afterwards. But every man, in my opinion, should be prepared to do this. Every man should have some sort of training. Every man should know how to fight at least a little bit. Because even if you're not a violent person, which I am not, by the way, and I hope none of you are, even if you are not a violent person by nature, the time may come when it is called for. And, again, hopefully that day never comes. Hopefully the day never comes when any of the training that I give people... Heck, if I just spend the rest of my career, the rest of this channel, the rest of my life plinking away at stealing cardboard, having good fun with good people on the range, and never have to fire a shot in anger or or swing another fist in anger, I would die a happy man, trust me. But that is not the world we live in, folks. The world we live in is dangerous, getting more dangerous by the day, and every single day we're given new reasons and given new aspects of why we need to stay strong, stay on guard, and stay frosty, my friends.